Hi, I'm Trish. Um, just thought I'll check in and let you know about my um, my pre-op appointment that I had today for my tummy tuck that's coming up on the 1st of June, which is exactly one month from today. It's, it's very, very exciting, but it's also very terrifying and, you know, I've got a lot of stuff to organise and, and all this sort of thing. But I had my, my, my pre-op appointment with the surgeon today and leading up to it I was I was very very nervous but I, I couldn't really put my finger on why um, you know because I just sort of kept going over it and thinking you know I satisfy all the criteria you know I've lost enough BMI points and I've you know my, my weight's fine and, and and just all these things going through my head thinking you know it's, it's not like I'm going to get knocked back or or, or anything like that I've, I've done all the right things I qualify for this surgery I can have this surgery the surgery is going to go ahead and it wasn't until I left the appointment that I realised I'd been really quite anxious because it, it, it's like, you know, like that final um, confirmation of, of exactly what's going to happen and, and um, what I can expect from the surgery. Now, a um, bit of background, for if you haven't been playing along at home, my highest weight was 170 kilos. Today I was 86. Um, I, I did plan on losing probably another two kilos before surgery if I can, but my, my body's shut down shop on, on losing weight, but I'm going to give it a go. Yeah, so sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Um, so I'm, I'm fine to go ahead with the surgery, and I asked the surgeon like a million questions today, like three pages of this, and he was just so patient, just answered all of them, and he, you know, he had a look at my belly, and he had a look at my boobs, because he's got to do a bit of revision on my boobs as well. Um, I, I, I don't want to go into anything blindly, so I asked him like a lot of the hard questions that have been really bothering me, things that I've been losing sleep over, like um, I was very worried that I'd end up with a flat butt. Um, that, that, would, that was one of my biggest worries. Um, turns out I'm not actually going to end up with a flat butt, but um, I might end up with um, a mons that I'm not happy with. That's going to keep me awake for the next month. So, so yeah, when I left the appointment, I realised that that's, that's all the things that have been making me anxious, like finding out all the realities of exactly what can be done for me. Um, I, I, it's not like I'm a 60 kilo person who's had a big pregnancy and is going in with a little bit of muscle separation and a little bit of a saggy belly. I'm, I'm going in having lost half my body weight and... You know, there's there's only so much that can be done for for massive weight loss patients when it comes to um, you know removing excess skin. And I know that I I completely get that. I'm um, you know as as he said, he's he's not going to get me perfect, but he's going to get me as good as he can. So um, because my brain's a little bit fried at the moment, I just feel a little bit flat because you know all the reality is sort of like hitting in now. Um, and I, I will be a lot better after the surgery, but I'm not going to be perfect, and I'm going to need to um, to to deal with that and ex and you know learn to relearn again, again to love my new body. So I'll just go through just my list of questions because that'll that'll make it easier rather than me just trying to remember anything, everything. Um, he said I'll probably be in hospital about four or five days because it is quite a big surgery. Um, if I can stay longer, I will, because I know that um, the pain is always worse when you go home. So if I can get another day or two, I will. But, you know, maybe I'll be fine. I don't think so, though, because I asked him if it was going to be um, better or worse than the, 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 the massive breast reduction surgery I had last year, and he said it'll probably be the same. And, and, and that was hell for me. So at least I know what I'm in for. Um, I asked him how long I would have to take off the gym and he said only four weeks, which is great for me. If, if I'm away from the gym for too long, my, my mental health suffers. So, uh, but he said four weeks back at the gym, but I can only do, you know, like just very gentle, um, like treadmill, some, some walking, a little bit of light jogging, um, that sort of thing. No weights, no weights until six weeks. I can start to do some gentle weights and from eight weeks, I can start doing some, some gentle core work, just like, you know, planking and that sort of thing, but like taking it easy. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with that. Um, he said, I am able to sleep on my sides as soon as I'm comfortable to do so, but um, that probably won't be for a while. Um, 
I asked him about swelling because I've got no idea what size I'm going to be after surgery. I'm in bottoms now, anywhere between, like my, my gym pants are a size 14, but I've got jeans that I wear that are a size 18. So, and I don't wear a real lot in the way of pants because of the belly that hangs. It's very, very near impossible to find anything that looks okay with that belly. So, you know, given that I, I don't even really know what size I am now, so it's, we'll average it out, say I'm a size 16, I, I've got no idea what size I'm going to be afterwards. And I was, because I've seen some photos of ladies and, and watched videos of ladies who've had just like phenomenal swelling after a tummy tuck. And I know that I will get that. I know that I will have months of swell hell. But I wasn't sure if that swelling was going to actually like make me bigger than what I am now initially. Turns out, no, I will have swelling and I will be bigger than, you know, what the end result will be, obviously, but I will still be smaller than what I am now. I have, however, decided to not wear um, pyjama pants in the hospital because I think it's just going to be too difficult with the drains. And also, and this is something I, I only just thought of yesterday, it'll be really hard to get them on and off and up and down going to the toilet. I think I'm going to be very limited with movement, so night as it is. Um, I asked him if I will bulge over the top of the incision. I've seen a lot of ladies, um, w like where their scar goes around their tummy, and not so much their tummy, but around their hips, and there's like a, an indent. You know, like if you wear your undies too tight over your chubbies and the, you get that muffin top over the top? He said, I will have a um, little bit of a muffin top over the top. He said, that's um, unavoidable with the scope of what he's allowed to do for me. And he showed me um, how much it would be bulging over the top. And honestly, I'm, oh, it's fine. It's, it's going to be very, very minimal. <coughs> um, oh, my God. I asked about post-op garments, and I'm, I'm, I am dreading this. He said, the hospital will provide a binder, <coughs> um, but if I wanted to get another one, they're only about 30 bucks. So he said, I will wear the binder for the first three or four days until I am comfortable enough to get into a marina garment, which goes from under my boobs all the way down to the, like the tops of my legs. And it's got like this hook and eye thing in the crotch so I can go to the toilet and um, a zip up the side. That that all just looks like just, and I've got to wear that 24 hours a day for three months with the binder as well. I, I do you know, th th I, I am a girl who, as soon as I get home, I get my bra off, I get my pants off if I'm wearing pants, and I get into my PJs. In summer, I wear just undies and one of my son's old oversized singlets. That's it. I, I can't stand anything restrictive. And now I'm going to have to be wearing this, this, these restrictive garments 24 hours a day for three months. I'm going to go insane. Absolutely insane. So anyway, I've got one of those Marina garments on order. Um, I think it's going to be... Uh, they, they couldn't tell me the price, but it would probably be about $120, $130, I think, which is a lot less than what I was expecting. And I'm going to try to get a second one, um, second hand, because I, as long as it's not all stretched out of shape, I don't care, I don't care if it's got blood stains on it, I don't, I don't care if it's got gore stains on it, whatever I get, if I get it second hand, I'm going to be soaking it in nappy sand or, you know, some kind of antibacterial what, I don't care what it looks like, I'm not that bloody fussy, and I can't afford to be that fussy. So I'll have a second one um, to wear while the other one's in the wash. The receptionists at my plastic surgeon's office said that I won't be able to take the garment off at all for a week, not even to shower. I'm not going to be allowed to shower for a week. That thing goes on your crotch. That's disgusting. I, if, if that's the case, if I really am not allowed to take that garment off for a week, I will, I'll just leave the crotch of it undone and hope that it doesn't roll up because that, that, that's, that's festy. That is, that is a million percent festy and I will not do that. I refuse to do that. But that's something I can, that's a bridge I'll, I'll, I'll cross when I have to. Um, I asked how many drains and he said it'll be two or four drains. Um, he doesn't know until he, you know, does the work, but, but between two and four. 
Plus, I'm having revision on my on my boobs, so I might have another drain in um, one of my boobs. So it'll be anywhere between three and five drains. <laughs> Yay, I love drains. Um, and he said those drains most likely will come out before I leave hospital. So any time I've had drains, I've always come out before I leave hospital. I mustn't be a very leaky kind of person. Um, I asked how far around the incision will extend, and he told me, I thought it was going to go like almost all the way around the back, but it's not. He said it'll probably go to about here. Um, and I will, he said I definitely will have dog ears, and I will have to go back and get those dog ears fixed at some time. So, you know, I can, I can live with dog ears if I know they're going to be fixed, that's not a problem. Um, I've also seen a lot of ladies whose uh, skin is pleated along the incision line and I asked him if I will be pleated and he said I definitely will be pleated um, just because of how much skin I've got but over a period of you know several months that pleating evens out so that'll that'll be fine it's just going to be really really ugly initially but again as long as I know that's going to you know sort itself out I can live with that um, I also have two Caesar scars and he said he will cut below the Caesar scars because he said if, if he goes above the Caesar scars and then there's, you know, like a gap of skin, like essentially between this, the Caesar scars and the, um, the tummy tuck scar, that skin in between will die because there's just no, not enough blood supply. So he's going to cut underneath the Caesar scars, but because he's going to be pulling everything up, the new scar will be higher than the Caesar scars, which also means that my pubic line is going to be higher. I'll, I'll deal with that and I'll, I'll talk more about that in a minute as well. Um, I asked him, I've seen lots of different shapes of the Caesar scars that go around. I've seen some that just go, you know, nice straight round curve. I've seen some that sort of dip down and go like that. I've seen some that, that look like a roller coaster. He said he may need to do the one that sort of goes like that, but he usually tries to get just a nice curved scar like that. It, it, it doesn't really matter to me that that much. Scar's not an issue. I, I said to him, you can you can cut around the back as far as you like. The scars don't bother me. Um, I'd just like to have some idea of what I'm going to end up with so that I don't sort of like, you know, go in expecting a nice curved scar and then come out with, you know, a rounder one or whatever. Um, Mm, mm, mm. Yes, my pubic line will be a little bit higher. Now, I asked him about my mons. Um, now, I don't have... I, I don't know. I, I, I haven't seen that many vaginas in my time. But I think mine, like well, my, my mons, isn't particularly fat or, or anything. The skin's a little bit loose. But, you know, it's hard to tell because my belly hangs down on it. So, you know, to see it, I've got to pull my belly up. So that changes its shape. And, I, you know, I've stood in the mirror a lot and pulled my belly up to try to get some idea of what my Mons is going to look like afterwards. Doing that, I think it looks quite fine. But I'm very, very, very worried that, because I've, I have seen some women's Mons after a tummy tuck surgery and they just end up with this great big swollen, flabby, bulgy thing that, that, that looks like they've got a penis in their undies. If, if that happened to me, I, I I could not cope with that. I would I would flip my shit. I, I could not cope with that. But because I'm being done in the public system, he can't do a mons plasty on me. He's not allowed to do a mons plasty. The, the government doesn't cover that. But I'll tell you, I just, I couldn't cope with that. Could not cope with that. N imagine never being able to wear, like, a bikini or bathers or... You know, gym? How could I go to the gym with a great big... No. So anyway, um, he said what he can do, because he's cutting it open there anyway, is he, he he's, he's not allowed to do liposuction either, but he can cut away some of the fat that's in there and just pull it up as tight as he can, which um, that is why my pubic line will be higher, but you know what, that, that's, that's a trade-off I'm willing to make. He said my, 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 my pubic line won't go up to my belly button and I, I've seen some pretty high pubic lines after um, tummy tucks. Um, I'm, I'm happy to shave. I'll shave every day for the rest of my life if I have to, to not have that big fat fanny thing going on. Um, I asked him if I will have any external stitches and I asked him that because when I had my boobs done, 
I expected if all of the stitches to be um, internal and I, I did have a lot of internal stitches but I also had a few external stitches um, like down um, from the nipple down to the inframammary crease and um, in the inframammary crease around my nipples. Um, I can't remember how many I had but it was it was probably at least half a dozen, I think. I, I, I can't remember, and it was only a year ago. I, I find external stitches quite stressful, and I shouldn't because in all of this, the many, many, many stitches I've had throughout my life, only one stitch has ever hurt coming out. They, they don't hurt, and I know that, just like drains. I've had a lot of drains, only one drain ever hurt coming out. I know drains don't hurt, but I still get very anxious about them. So I asked him if I'll have any external stitches, and he said, yes, I'll have some. But then I forgot to ask where they'll be and whatever. But anyway, they'll, they'll probably be at that, that T-junction at the bottom of the vertical scar that uh, runs into the horizontal just for, like, extra, um, you know, skin not ripping openness. Um, I asked him about a pain buster, you know, the, the local anaesthetic um, sprinkler thing that they put inside that runs up your, um, where they do the muscle repair. And the last time I saw him, he said that, yes, he would use one. And I wanted to confirm with him again today if he would use that. And he said, no, he, he must have been using them a few times and found that they cause more problems um, than what they solve. He said they, you know, they break and they fall out. And they just, just he said, they're just, he said, he'll do one if I want one. But um, he does like a, um, a block in the, um, in the muscles there where they do the muscle repair and he said that lasts for about six to eight hours and you know that that's probably the worst of it that's when the worst of the pain is you know that first night so I, I just deferred to his better judgment and I said okay that'll that'll do me fine um, I asked if my thighs will be swollen because I've heard a lot of ladies saying that they're um just get I think my hair's giving me the shits heard a lot of ladies saying after tummy tuck that their thighs swelled up quite a lot um, and he said that only the very top of my thighs, like near where the incision will be, will um, be swollen. So, and I mean that doesn't really bother me because I know the swelling will go down. But I just, I don't know, I just wanted to know in case I needed to buy really big pants or something. I don't know. But if my thighs do swell up, they'll look amazing because I'm quite muscular now and it'll fill out all that loose skin. Um, I asked if I will still be curvy and he said yes because I've been worried. Um, even though I'm having the fleur de lace and the muscle repair, so that will, be, will bring me in at the waist. I'm going to lose all... I'll show you. I've got all of that that's going to come off on my hips. So that helps to add to the illusion of a smaller waist because it goes out there. And I thought if he takes all that off, I might look sort of straight up and downy. But because he's also, you know, he's going to be doing that fleur de lace that'll bring my waist in. So my waist will be smaller and that'll be smaller so I'll still be in proportion and curvy. And I don't, I look all nice and sort of flat in that everything today but I've got tights on and that holds everything nice and firm. Um, I also asked him about my saddle bags because I'm a weirdo and I really like my saddle bags and the amount that he's going to like pull up my skin like on the front and the sides, that's not going to affect my saddle bags. I thought it might sort of smooth them out a bit but it's not going to. And oddly I'm happy about that because I like them. I asked him about my belly button because he's going to have to cut straight through like I think they like cut down and round and then down again so he said you know like my belly button will be left on a stalk and then there'll be a new hole made like through the vertical incision um, for my belly button and he said initially it will be quite big because um, they shrink up over time and I'm happy with that. I didn't want one of those t teeny tiny little slit belly buttons because I've got a pretty decent sized belly button and I like my belly button. And I asked him if he does stitches on the inside of the belly button or the outside and he said both. So I'm, I'm probably going to have a visible scar around my belly button. That doesn't bother me. I've, I've got a massive scar on my belly button now anyway. So it's just going to give it a bit more character. Um, I've also got a very large scar on the right side under my ribs from when I had my gallbladder out, which is... Um, part of the reason that he has to do a fleur de lace because of the, the blood supply issue um, and I've got my lap band scar on the other side he said I'm going to lose my lap band scar but I don't think from from where he was pinching everything in I don't think I'm going to lose all of my 
gallbladder scar, but my gallbladder scar will be much further down. It'll be quite low. Um, and I've seen um, other ladies, I've done a lot of research, I really overthink shit. Um, I've seen some ladies who've had this surgery with that scar and their vertical scar like, you know, curves off to the side and sometimes, you know, like because of the way that they're, they're um, where they've put the incisions, their waist goes in a lot more on one side than on the other side. So I asked him if my vertical scar will be straight and he said yes. And I asked him if my waist will be symmetrical. And he said yes. So that's all good. And oh, I asked him if he could tell me how much muscle separation there was. And he said no, not until he gets in there and everything because there's all fat. And it's just too hard to feel. Blah, 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 blah. But I have felt it myself. And I think I've got about three fingers worth. I think I'm, I've worked it out. It's about seven centimetres. But I'm not a surgeon. I just looked up online how to do it did it and that's what I've come up with and from what I can make out that's quite a separation it's it's not like massive but it's a decent separation so I guess that means if I've got like a seven centimeter separation that my waist is going to come in seven centimeters I don't know if it's that simple I've got a pretty small waist now anyway um, the flat butt I asked him about the flat butt because I've been losing sleep over that and he said that it's basically going to be um, it's, it's not really going to be flat. It'll be it'll be pulled in like from the front from the fleur de lis, um, so it'll it'll be firmer. But I'm still going to have plenty of butt there, plenty of butt, which makes me very very happy. Um, I asked him because I haven't been able to get a straight answer from anywhere if I can exercise right up till the day before surgery, and he said yes, that's fine. I asked him if I can do ab work right up till the day before surgery, and he said yes. Um, I don't need to rest my abs or anything. I, d I didn't know if I had to because you know like if you can if you do work your muscles sometimes you get those little micro tears and um, you know like when you when you work your muscles they can get all puffed up and full of fluid and, and all this sort of stuff um, and I thought that might be a hindrance to lacing them up or whatever I don't, I don't know I'm obviously not a surgeon so I thought I'll ask the question and I'm not afraid to really ask anyone you know what could be deemed stupid questions. Um, so he said, no, it's fine to exercise right up till the day before. I don't have to rest my abs. It makes no difference. So that was good. Um, but I'm not going to exercise right up until the day before. I'll probably have two days off before. I'm having the surgery on the Thursday. I probably won't exercise on the Tuesday and the Wednesday because it'll make me feel better. Um, I asked how close to surgery can I... Um, trim my pubic area because I don't shave but I trim and I, and I don't trim that often probably maybe only every couple of months um, but I do want to trim as close to the surgery as possible because I'm probably not really going to feel like doing it for quite a while after so and I, I you know I want to be neat when I go in so he said um, 48 hours I can and I've heard other people saying you know like oh two weeks or a month or whatever so and he said um, he said to me he said but don't shave trim so that he can see where my hairline is so I'll do it probably one or two weeks before I go in for the surgery because I here's a hot tip if you shave your pubes off enough times they just don't grow back they you it's you want to you want to make sure that you want to be bare down there forever I've got very very little hair so if I do it one or two weeks before my surgery it'll be fine and I also asked him about my boobs because I've still got breast necrosis, uh, breast necrosis, fat necrosis in both boobs. One great big sausage in my left one and in my right one a great big lump here and a great big massive lump under here which is actually deforming the shape of my breast down there. So um, he's going to reopen my incisions around the tops of my nipples and take out those top fat necroses. Is that the plural of necrosis? I don't know. Um, plus, he'll have to reopen this incision down here to take this fat necrosis out. And because I've got so much fat necrosis in this breast, it is actually larger than the other one, he's going to, like, tuck that in a little bit and make it, you know, run it in a little bit because taking out that much fat necrosis is going to reduce the volume of that breast a little bit. Um, so he's gonna, just going to tuck that in, which will improve... Um, improve how it looks and make it more symmetrical to the other side and fix that issue with losing the volume because the, the necrosis is gone. I also asked him about the dog's ears here, which he had said he was going to fix, and he will still fix them, 
um, but he may not be able to do it on the day. It will just depend what his um, surgical load is that day. If there is someone else in there with, you know, like a, a melanoma or something that really needs surgery um, on that day, he won't be able to do it because it adds time. Because he has to, if he if he does my dog ears, he I have to be turned. And he said that that adds an hour to the surgery, and I would need to be turned twice. So that's an extra two hours on the surgery because um, they've got to turn you and then they've got to re-drape you and re-sterilise the whole area and he has to re-scrub in and, and all the rest of it. So if he doesn't get that done on the day, I'm going to have to have the dog ears from my tummy tuck fixed at some time anyway, so he'll just do that and that at the same time. Uh, to be honest, I'm really not happy about that because I've all, already put up with these dog ears for 12 months. I've not been able to get a sport bra that fits me because of that, that those dog ears just sticking out over the top. Um, I, I've not been able to find a bikini top that, that is suitable because of that. I, I, I've only bought myself, I think, three bras since I had my boobs done because I just can't find any bras that don't, that, that you know, can accommodate those dog ears. So anyway, but it, it will eventually be done, you know, in public system I'll wait another 12 freaking months just to get dog ears done. But anyway. Um, I asked him about um, my left nipple, which is not centred within the areola because I had some weird skin thing there that he trimmed off. That can't really be fixed. I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll live with that. That's not too bad. My boobs have bottomed out a little bit, which can happen when you have a breast reduction. Um, it's not too, too bad. If, if, it, if it were bad enough that it was bothering me, I would ask for a revision. And I am still... the the. The prospect of having a further reduction done is not off the table for me. I'm, I am considering it having a further reduction because they're just, they're just still too massive for me, and I've still got back pain. But I don't want to worry about that right now. Um, and that's all. That was all the questions I asked him. And um, yeah, I've just come away um, <laughs> relieved that I'm not going to have a flat butt. Disappointed that I might end up with a mangled mons. I. But I, I, I don't know, because when I lift up my tummy, it looks fine. I don't know. Um, disappointed that I might not be able to get the dog's ears under my arms fixed yet. Um, but, you know, I've got a month to process all this. And I've got a lot of things to organise in that time. So, um... That, that's it for now. I'm, I'm not going to show you all my belly and, and everything in this video because I'm just not in the right frame of mind. I'm going to have to be in a good frame of mind and plan it out properly. But I will do that soonish, probably within the next couple of weeks, because I have to got to get it done before my um, before my surgery. And um, yeah, that's it. That's it for now. And um, I'll see you in a couple of weeks, probably.